This was my first trip into Zimbabwe's Lower Zambezi River Valley. Our plan was to investigate the impacts a hunting outfitter, Charlton McCallum Safaris, is having on the people and wildlife of the region. I went in with an open mind, intending to accept things as they came and bear witness to the realities of life here without judgment. I hoped what I saw would improve my understanding of how wildlife conservation can be delivered in a world where the resources to protect nature are often too little and where our growing human population is simultaneously chafing against wildlife in some places while becoming detached from the outdoors in others. Something I feel must be addressed is what many find difficult to understand, elephant hunting itself. Behind me is an elephant that a hunter has shot, legally and ethically. It's being cut up to provide meat for the local community. Now this can be a difficult sight for many Westerners to see, but for the people who live here in the Zambezi Valley, this elephant is an economic lifeline that provides them a cash income and food for themselves and their children. And it's that lifeline that's enabling elephants to thrive in Zimbabwe. Polling shows most people support hunting when the meat of the animals killed is eaten. One reason so many people may oppose the hunting of African wildlife is a common misperception that when the animals are killed, the head and the horns are taken, but the meat is left to rot. I'm here in the village of Chooboga. An American hunter has shot a Cape buffalo nearby. Now here in Zimbabwe, local communities like this are given a quota of animals by the government that they can either hunt themselves or they can sell that quota to a hunting operator who then sells it on to an American client. Either way, the communities get to keep the meat from these animals. Contrary to popular perception, when Americans hunt in countries like Zimbabwe, they don't just take the head and leave the animal to rot. The meat is taken and consumed by these people, and it's appreciated. As the meat was distributed, I could feel the atmosphere change. The soft air was electrified with anticipation and excitement. The expressions on the faces of the gathered crowd conveyed the importance of what was happening. I can't adequately describe the visceral sensation of seeing such a large group of people whose day had suddenly been made that much better, especially by something so many in the West take for granted, having a piece of meat. What I saw was a clear and direct economic benefit hunting provides people in the Lower Zambezi Valley While I was there documenting the distribution of meat, I was fortunate enough to speak with the hunter who had come to witness the process. This was the perfect opportunity to ask him some questions. So the buffalo that you shot yes. fed this entire village. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Well, it's a bit overwhelming, to be honest. It's humbling. I, I mean, we know about food insecure areas like this, but to go on a safari and harvest a buffalo and bring it to local villagers who really, really, really need the protein and the meat is is uh, I'm glad I'm able to do it. And as you know, there's people around the world who think hunting in places like Zimbabwe should end. Yeah, they don't understand the realities of the environment on the ground. The reality is, is these animals are a commodity and the locals benefit from them through food. Uh, guys like me come into country to hunt and the fee we pay the local government and the professional hunters go to employ a lot of people around here. The people could hunt the animals themselves, but doing so would deny them the cash visiting hunters pay for the privilege of hunting here. The program is as if someone were paying any of us in the West to shop for our groceries, and then paid for our groceries themselves before delivering them to our door. If hunting were to be banned here, then the poachers would take over, uh, the game animals would disappear, the local economy would suffer tremendously because we, well, the professional hunters employ trackers and cooks and maids and drivers and it would really depress the economy even further than this economy is already depressed here, not to mention the fact that these people would miss out on all this food. So it would, it would be devastating for sure. People here do not have supermarkets. They eat what they can raise in the parched soil and what others can hunt. 
Such waste would be unthinkable in a place like the Lower Zambezi Valley, where hunger is a continuing challenge. Traveling through the village, I met one of the wives of a tracker who works for Charlton McCallum Safaris and is directly impacted by this program. I was fortunate to hear her story. I began to see that there was more to this program than just meat and money. It opened up new ventures for other jobs and industries on a micro level within the community. This has created a need for clinics and schools. I took the time to visit one of the local clinics in the area after noticing that one of the children had a broken arm. How many people are benefiting from the clinic? A total population of um, 8,486. Why do most people come to the clinic? Yeah, it's like it's just now. We have got malaria, we've got diarrhea, we have got some upper respiratory infections and injuries too. They are common. Mm. So very serious injuries you know, can bring people here. There's a lot of people in the West that say hunting provides no benefits to the local people. Has this clinic benefited from the presence of hunting? Yes, they help us. To mention fuel with water, uh, came and uh, put some solar system to pump out water. And also they help us even during the emergencies, especially those uh, patients who are attacked, with, who can say human-animal conflict, especially an animal like uh, elephants and buffaloes. They rush the patient from here to get assisted. That's some of the, the relationship between us and them. What are your concerns if hunting were to end in Zimbabwe? If we say there's no more hunting in Zimbabwe, how would that affect you? If there is no hunting, I think we are going to have so many challenges. For those who, who can help us, they are far away. And these hunters, they are in the area. So I think hunting is very important in this area. Legal, regulated hunting helps conserve biodiversity because the revenue generated from hunters improves the lives of people who live alongside wildlife. Part of my trip took me to a local school funded by hunters' dollars so I could hear from the teachers and administrators about what would happen if legal, regulated hunting were to end in this part of Zimbabwe. How many students do you have at this school? We have got 256. And what subjects are these children learning? We have got agriculture and science. We have got ICT, mathematics, social sciences like heritage, and CPA, visual and performing arts. We have got PE, those areas. And how has the hunting operator helped this school? Uh, to a great extent, we are benefiting from the hunting operations here. Because if you look at this building, they are there because of this hunting operation. If you look at our community, it is very remote and the parents cannot afford to pay school fees so that we can develop it. But through those hunting activities, we have got these classroom blocks and the furniture which you will see inside. Did you know that there are some people in the world who would like to see hunting end in Zimbabwe? Hunting ending in Zimbabwe? Yes, there are people who would like hunting to end in Zimbabwe. Mm, that, will, that will be disastrous to some communities like this community. Definitely it will mean that education 
will be non-existent because all their resources which they are using for education are coming through these hunting activities and we are benefiting from those hands. And what would you say to the people who would like to see hunting end in Zimbabwe? I would encourage them to critically study the benefits of hunting in such communities. And they should also take note of that if hunting is stopped, even the natural environment in which these animals are living, it will be devastated and they will end up having no habitat. During my exploration, I did see, however, that there was one key component holding this entire ecosystem together. I'm here in the Dandi Safari area, 500,000 acres of remote rugged terrain in Zimbabwe's Zambezi Valley. Now this area is not suitable for photo tourism. It's about 97 degrees in the shade and Mapani flies are swarming all around me. It is, however, critical to the survival of elephants and other wildlife. And there is one group of men who are standing between those animals and the poachers that would take them, the Donde Anti-Poaching Unit, or DAPU. How many members of the team are there? How many Game Scouts are, are part of DAPU? We have 22 guys. And do they all come from the local community? Yes. Before DAPU, you, they used to hunt themselves. Uh, it's not all that uh, everyone is benefiting. So only maybe two members out of thousands will be enjoying meat. But then, miles and past, they decided to work with these community scouts. We have taken thousands and thousands of snakes. Now everyone is uh, having meat. Also, the communities, they are also receiving money. It is a project for everyone. So, miles and past, I want to thank them too, that everyone is happy. What would happen to Dapu if hunting were to stop? Uh, that would become a hard life to us because we are looking for many families. So we are trying our best to look after this game so that uh, everything will remain nature like we started. What was the extent of the poaching here? Was it primarily meat poaching or was there poaching for ivory happening as well? I think there was both. I mean, Dandy East, for example, we got there, we found 5,000 snares in the first year. And we counted 40 elephant carcasses. What have you and Buzz done to help facilitate that decrease in elephant poaching? We just started helping the scouts. They were totally hamstrung. We just made sure they got paid, they were rewarded if they were successful. We tried to pick up their morale. We made sure they had all the kit they needed. Vehicles were a big thing. And we had a good opportunity to start from the beginning, as it were, and we empowered them and we built a nice little team. They've done very, very well. You know, you talked about the support that you were giving the Game Scouts. Yes. But the support that you've given to this area isn't just to the Game Scouts. No. Can you talk a little bit about the projects that you've supported that benefit the local community? The community benefit from uh, legal regulated hunting by proceed sharing. It's before profit. So 50% of the proceeds goes to council and communities, and our 50% is for us, you know, we use that for anti-poaching and the camps and the staff and all the employment and you know, protecting the biodiversity, basically. In terms of infrastructure, uh, we've done 22 boreholes, we've done 15 solar-powered water pumps, we've equipped three clinics, we've rebuilt two schools. Uh, that's just all part of our infrastructure development that we have done here. But they do a lot themselves with money they've actually earned from proceeds of things that they've actually looked after and now seen the reward from. And really that's how it should be, hey? As you're aware, there's a, a global campaign underway to end legal regulated hunting. What do you think would happen to, to this area if those campaigns were successful? If there was no hunting, there'd be absolutely no incentive at all for the community to look after the wildlife or the habitat. Why would they look after elephants that eat their crops and kill their children on the way to school? There'd be no incentive for them to do that. That would be the end of dandy biodiversity. That would be the end of it, undoubtedly. I can't say that I came home with any good answers to the challenges we face if we're to conserve Africa's wildlife. But I did leave with a deeper understanding of the role of legal regulated hunting in addressing those challenges in the lower Zambezi River Valley. Hunting is and always should be something that inspires strong emotions. If it does not, 
that will mean we have ceased to value wildlife. And while each of us value wildlife in our own way, for people living in the Lower Zambezi Valley, those values are very different from what many in places like London, New York, or Brussels might hold. Let us be thoughtful of how our views and actions from across far distant oceans may affect the conservation of wildlife and wilderness and of those whose livelihoods depend solely on the benefits well-regulated hunting brings to such areas.